Hello, welcome everybody uh, in our talk about uh, the wise ways in open source compliance, taxonomy, taxonomy and the tools of uh, open source compliance. Let us introduce ourselves. My name is Greg Echatari and I'm working as a senior open source specialist in the Nokia open source program office and my colleague here is yeah, I'm uh, Jan Jorel. I'm a student at uh, Aalto University and uh, I work this summer as a summer trainee at uh, Nokia's open source program office also. And uh, in this talk we will discuss um, a bit of a taxonomy of the open source compliance check because we think that it's very important that, that we have a, a well-defined um, set of, of um, uh actions what we are doing in the in the compliance check and we will cover a bit uh, which tools are covering which part of these uh, this process but let's start from the um from the really beginning so what is the the target of uh, of open source compliance check the target of of open source compliance check is to follow the license obligations uh of the used open source software in a product, which means that that uh, we have to uh, know what is the uh, list of open source software used in the product. Uh, we have to know what is the license of these uh, open source software components, and we have to know uh, what are the different obligations in these licenses, and we have to act uh, according to them. So. Uh, for this, uh, the first step uh, is to get the list of uh, of uh, open source software uh, what is used in the product, which is creating the so-called bill of material. Uh, and the very difficult part of this is to get all the dependencies and all the dependencies of dependencies. I will discuss this a bit uh, a bit uh, later. And then there is a there is a second uh, step, which is basically a decision to decide if the if the usage of the open source component uh, in the given product is okay or not. Different companies have different policies on on um, on the usage of open source based on uh, their internal uh, business processes. But still, a decision has to be made uh, if the open source component can be used or not. And then the third third um, check is to fulfill the obligations of the of the license or licenses. So let's see these in in detail. Uh, so the first step is to get the list of the used open source uh, components and their licenses. And this is a very complex uh, step to create this full so-called bill of material. Um, and I uh, uh, collected all the steps which are needed for, a, let's say, a full analysis. And for for um, uh, each of them, I, I describe a bit what what do I mean on them. Them. So the first step is is uh, do a container content resolution, which means that if we are using um, uh, containers and container images, um, we need to unpack the content of these uh, these containers so we are able to to analyze um, uh, the content of the container images images which means that we have to get access to all, all files stored in the in the container images uh, there is an interesting um, fact about content images that that they are using these layers in the file system so in theory it's possible to have hidden content in the in the content images and some tools are discovering these hidden files, some tools do not discover these, these hidden files, but still we need this step to, to unpack the containers. And then uh, we need to um, resolve the dependencies and this can happen in, 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 uh, in two levels. Um, there is a level what I call the operating system level package dependency, which means that that uh, we use the tools 
what the operating systems are are using. So we are using uh, RPM, ZPT, EU, more whatever the operating system has. So these tools to discover what packages are installed um, uh, to the uh, product what we would like to ship. The other layer of uh, of the dependency resolving is the is the technology level. Uh, uh, package dependency resolving, which means that, that we use uh, language specific tools like um, PEEP or NPM or GoDeP or something like that to discover what kind of dependencies the given um, source code what we are producing uh, are using. So for example, in case of, uh, of, of Golang, um, this this uh, is, is the discovery of all the all the included Go modules and all the transient dependencies of all these these um, Go modules. But still, uh, until this step, we just uh, or only have the list of the open source components. We do not have uh, the source code of these, or we do not have any information about the license or or the copyright information of of these. So we need to get. Uh, the source code to run a, a full analysis, and for this we need the source code uh, downloader, which which basically downloads based on this information get from these different sources. It downloads the source code of the open source components, and then there is a need um, to scan for the copyrights and license information. So it's a, it's a, it's a tool. Which which goes through um, the source code and detects licenses and and copyrights information. Um, this step um, can be bypassed by a by a different step, which is the the online license checking. So there are there are or actually there is a, a database called clearly defined, which is accessible by everybody online. And this uh, contains the, the license and copyright information of different open source components. So instead of scanning, it is possible to, to get this information from, from clearly defined. Um, uh, and there is also another optional step, which is the, the binary analyzer. So it, it, it can happen that we do not have access to the source code of, of, uh, of the different uh, components. Um, in the product, so in this case, um, uh, binary analysis is needed when when we analyze the binary artifact of uh, of a build process. Uh, and as a last step, um, uh, there is a need for for what is called forensic code analysis, which means that that we scan the source code again for different code snippets. Um, uh, copied from other places, like from other uh, or from any open source um, uh, projects or from um, uh, Stack Overflow and places uh, like that. So all of these steps are needed uh, to get the full list of, of uh, open source components, uh, their licenses and their uh, copyright information. But then uh, in step two, which is a bit more simple, we need to make a decision if the usage of the open source project is, is OK or not. And for this, uh, we need basically two steps. So first of all, we need the software structure analyzer, which means that we need to be able to get a, a, a information about how the open source software is communicating with other parts of the software, because some licenses have different um, uh, obligations for um, open source software um, statically linked uh, to other software um, or dynamically so linked. So that's, that depends on these, these, uh, these, uh, these architectural decisions and we need to analyze uh, that structure. And then we need uh, basically a policy engine uh, which makes a decision based on all of this information. Um, and then the next uh, and last step is to fulfill the obligations. So for this, we need basically two things. We need an obligation database, which means that, that uh, we need information about what license uh, have what uh, obligations. 
and and uh, practically how to fulfill these and then we need um, uh, uh, some kind of a compliance bundle which fulfills the, the obligations this can be like uh, i don't know list of the copyright holders uh, in the law documentation or or uh, including the license text to the documentation or um, packaging code for for distribution this kind of things um, and this all of these steps can happen in uh, in different phases and different places in a in a in a build pipeline so in the first case um, uh, this is happening in a in a totally distributed way so each of the builds uh, execute these steps um, in the scope of the of the specific build and uh, I represented compliance and legal uh, experts here with um, uh, with this small figure uh, this information is inject injected to the somehow to the software artifacts uh, as part of the of the code tree or 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 something like that which is like in the context of the given uh, build pipeline and every step is executed there and all the decisions are made based on these uh, these policies um, which are basically part of the of the source code the other uh, architecture possibility is uh, is to do everything uh, in a centralized manner, meaning that there is a centralized set of tools which execute all of these steps and the build pipeline just feeds uh, information to these um, these uh, centralized tools and uh, and get basically a decision and the compliance bundle at the end of the of the handling of of uh, of the compliance and the the legal and compliance persons are are interacting with these uh, these uh, centralized tools and there is a of course a hybrid way when when some parts of of this process like the uh, the composition analysis is done as a part of the pipeline and other ways uh, are, are are done like the decision making and the bundle generation uh, are done in the centralized tools and and uh, in Nokia we are using this third uh, hybrid solution so all products are, are doing the composition analysis themselves based on the the specific technologies what they are using and they are uh, uploading all the data to a centralized tool and or legal and compliance colleagues are are, are, are doing their work um, interacting with centralized in, with the centralized tool and the centralized tool is providing a result to the build pipeline and the and the compliance bundle so uh, we are using this hybrid way of course it's possible to 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 do any combinations uh, like having only the decision in a centralized place and moving down the the bundle generation to the pipeline it's up to the decision of of each um, company Okay, that was the um, uh, the part of the of the let's say the paperwork, and let's uh, hear about the the actual tools which are covering these steps. Yeah. Okay. So I will talk a bit about uh, some different uh, compliance tools that we tested uh, mostly during the summer, and uh, a bit uh, what uh, the features they bring and if they're actually any good uh, to use. Okay, but before uh, I talk about that, uh, I want to briefly mention uh, 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 some things that we looked at uh, when selecting uh, which tools we were going to investigate. So, firstly, we wanted them to be open source, and uh, secondly, uh, we wanted them to be installable within a reasonable amount of time. So, maybe like a couple of days max. Okay, let's dive into the tools. So, the first tool that we tested. Uh, was the uh, OSS Review Toolkit, or ORT for short. And uh, it's an open source tool uh, developed by Here Technologies. And uh, it has uh, it's a toolkit consisting of different uh, sub-tools. So uh, it has an analyzer tool, which uh, can do this dependency analysis. And uh, based on uh, source code, find all the dependencies. And it works by using uh, 
different uh, technology specific uh, package managers. So for example, uh, if it's a Node.js project, it will use uh, NPM to figure out uh, all the dependencies and so on. And uh, yeah, then it also has a downloader tool uh, which uh, uses the analyzer results to, to download the source code for each of the dependencies. And uh, it's quite sophisticated. It can use uh, also uh, different uh, version control tools like Git to clone specific like uh, uh, versions uh, of, of the softwares. And then uh, there's the scanner tool, which uh, does this uh, uh, static uh, scanning of all the source code. And uh, for this, uh, by default, it's using uh, the scan code toolkit, which is another uh, um, static uh, license and copyright uh, uh, analyzer. And uh, so, yeah, it uses that to, to scan all of the components and uh, figure out uh, or find the licenses and copyright notices. And uh, after this, there's uh, an evaluator tool which can uh, look at the scan results and uh, and uh, and uh, apply some uh, custom rules to basically decide if it's okay to use use the 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 software. So uh, it has to be implemented uh, in a Kotlin-based uh, domain-specific language, so you can write uh, scripts uh, that specify these rules. So, for example, you could uh, you could uh, disallow using uh, some copyleft licenses or or something like that. And there's the reporter tool, which can uh, generate uh, reports in good-looking uh, human-readable formats. For example, HTML and PDF, and and so on. And uh, yeah, each of these tools uh, like uh, depend on the previous one for for uh, input files, so they can be run in this kind of pipeline way. And uh, yeah, I think I didn't mention it's a, uh, it's a CLI tool, so um, it can be run in, in scripts or, or uh, on some CI CD services or, or whatever. Okay, uh, up next is, is uh, Turn, which is a tool uh, developed by VMware, which is uh, focused on uh, container analysis and uh, finding uh, the bill of materials for for uh, container images, and uh, it works. It's uh, like a, a dynamic uh, analysis, so it works by mounting the different layers of the image, and uh, then running some shell scripts uh, inside of them to find find uh, find out the installed packages, uh, and uh, yeah, it can also use. Uh, as extensions, these, uh, this uh, scan code toolkit for uh, static uh, analysis of all the files in the container, and uh, also this uh, CVE binary tool uh, for vulnerability uh, scanning, so it can detect if there's some uh, some uh, package that uh, has uh, known vulnerability. And uh, yeah, it can also it generates reports in different uh, formats like uh, HTML. And also SPDX. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next tool is uh, licensed. It's a tool developed by GitHub, and uh, uh, it's uh, quite similar to to the ORT in its features. Or, but um, so it can do uh, dependency analysis based on uh, source code, and uh, also using these different uh, uh, technology specific uh, package managers, and uh, but it can't uh, download the source code. So, uh, but instead, it has a feature to fetch the licenses for each dependency. And uh, based on that, uh, you can uh, write in a config file a list of allowed licenses. And so it can check against that list if there are any licenses that are not allowed. And uh, then it can generate uh, some uh, reports for each component of the of the project uh, in uh, this notice format. Okay, uh, up next is this FOSA CLI, which is uh, very similar to licensed, I think, in its features. Uh, uh, so it can also uh, do, in a similar way, this uh, dependency analysis. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, that's the only feature that uh, 
or the rest of the features require you to to set up an uh, API key with uh, Osa.com, so you have to sign up to their services. So uh, yeah, the the dependency analysis part is like the only part uh, that can be run uh, without this setup. So, but it has uh, features to check for also uh, uh, license policy violations uh, that on uh, Fossa.com and uh, also generate reports and uh, and things like that. Okay, uh, up next is uh, Fossology, which is uh, a Linux Foundation project, uh, which uh, it's mainly focused on on scanning uh, and uh, reviewing, so it can't do this uh, dependency analysis. But uh, you can uh, upload uh, uh, softwares uh, to uh, their database using this web UI. And uh, it has two different uh, uh, license and copyright scanners, and uh, which uh, try to complement each other. And uh, then, uh, based on the results, you can uh, do some manual uh, clearing or and reviewing. So you can uh, uh, look at all the licenses found and and uh, even correct if there's something that uh, you think is wrong. And uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so it's a it's a web UI, but uh, the web UI looks a bit outdated in in my opinion. And uh, finally, it can generate the reports in different different formats. Okay, uh, up next is uh, Software 360 Antenna, which is a tool developed by Eclipse, and uh, it can do dependency analysis using this Maven dependency tree. Or firstly, uh, I can mention that uh, it can be like uh, installed as a Maven or a, a Gradle plugin. So if you're uh, using Maven or Gradle, you can uh, use it as a plugin. So that's quite neat. Uh, you can include it like in, in a build step. OK, but anyway, so it can do dependency analysis using this Maven dependency tree analyzer. But uh, that's uh, primarily for Java projects. Uh, so uh, if it's another type of project, you can uh, uh, feed it uh, ORT analyzer results instead. And uh, it can do download source code and uh, licenses using this Maven artifact resolver. Uh, but again, that's primarily for, for Java projects. So, But uh, if it's another type of project, you can use uh, the ORT downloader. Uh, it's like included, so you can use that to download the source code. And uh, uh, it can... Uh, check uh, for forbidden licenses also uh, as configured in your config file. And uh, it can generate reports in different formats like most of the other tools. And uh, But it can also be integrated into uh, Eclipse's Software 360 platform, which is an open source uh, software catalog uh, app. Uh, so you can uh, view later your results there uh, in like a web interface and, and uh, things like that. Okay. Yeah, the last tool that uh, we looked at was uh, this Go licenses tool, which is a tool developed by Google, which is uh, uh, it can uh, detect dependencies for Go projects, uh, uh, but uh, no, no uh, we noticed that it doesn't detect uh, versions, so that's a bit of a downside. And uh, uh, it can uh, it has a feature to collect all the artifacts needed for license compliance. So uh, it can figure out the licenses of all the dependencies. And uh, based on those, it can uh, collect the license text and, and copyright notices and even source code for licenses that uh, require it and uh, collect all of that into a single folder. So that's quite neat. And uh, it can also check for forbidden uh, licenses according to Google's uh, license classifier and uh, generate uh, CSV reports. OK, finally, uh, I've made this uh, comparison table to kind of compare all of the tools. So uh, up top, we have the tools and uh, uh, some steps in, uh, in uh, compliance. So yeah, from this, we can see that there's no, no tool that can uh, 
perform all of these these steps uh, perfectly and uh, some are, are of course overlapping in their their features but yeah uh, And with this, we reach the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for um, for listening to us. And if you have any questions, please use the conference platform to contact uh, to us, or you can just uh, use your or, or contact information. With this, we would like to thank you and have a nice conference.